A very good day. This session will understand about cholinergic neurotransmission and the drugs affecting it. Acetylcholine is the major neurotransmitter for cholinergic nerves. Uh, hence, we are going to discuss about synthesis, storage and release of acetylcholine and thereby the effect of acetylcholine on the receptors. And not only that, we are going to discuss about the drugs affecting all these stages. This diagram shows an example of cholinergic nerve terminal. This is presynaptic area, this is postsynaptic area, and this is synaptic cleft. The postsynaptic area is the one which has cholinergic receptors, which can be muscarinic receptor or nicotinic receptors. The very first step of acetylcholine synthesis begins with choline uptake into the presynaptic neuron. The choline uptake is mainly taken place by choline transporter. And this transporter is inhibited by a drug called as hemicholinium. Once the choline enters the presynaptic neuron, this choline binds with acetyl-CoA with the help of a very important enzyme called as acetyltransferases, it can convert to acetylcholine. And this ends the synthesis of acetylcholine. And once the acetylcholine is formed, then it is stored in the vesicles. Now vesicles are like balloon-like structures where they store all this acetylcholine neurotransmitter. Now these stored vesicles are ready to be released. Whenever there is activation of these presynaptic neurons or there is signal transduction, it leads to release of this acetylcholine neurotransmitter through this uh, process called as exocytosis. Release of this acetylcholine neurotransmitter is a very important step because this step is mainly inhibited by a drug called as botulinum. Now as we know botulinum is actually a toxin which is produced by Clostridium bacteria. This toxin is mainly known to inhibit the release or exocytosis of the acetylcholine neurotransmitter. These effects are mainly seen in neuromuscular junction. So here are the important points about the botulinum toxin you need to know. Botulinum toxin is released by Clostridium bacilli. The major mechanism is it inhibits the release of exo or exocytosis of acetylcholine. The important uses of botulinum toxins are spasmodic conditions like strabismus, blepharospasm, and hemifacial spasms. Other spasmodic conditions like adductor spasmodic dysphonia, oromandibular dystonia. Now, other conditions where it can be treated is the GI disorders like achalasia cardia, where there is spasm of lower esophageal sphincter. Now, this toxin is known to relax these sphincters, and as well as it is known to relax anal sphincters, so that's why it has its use in anal fissures. Now, another treatment which is becoming more popular these days is botulinum toxin also can treat facial wrinkles. So, cosmetically, now, nowadays, women are using botulinum toxin to relieve facial wrinkles. The only toxicity which we are worried about is hepatotoxicity, which is seen only with continued use of botulinum toxin. It's usually given as a local injection and it has a long-lasting effect. The effect may last for around 3 to 4 weeks. Now let's get back to the cholinergic neurotransmission. The next very important step is the action of acetylcholine on the receptors. Now as soon as acetylcholine binds to the receptor, it gives what is called as effect. Now the effect of the receptor depends on the type of receptor being stimulated like whether it is muscarinic receptors or nicotinic receptors. If it is muscarinic, it could be any one of the five receptors like M1, M2, M3, M4, M5. Or it can be nicotinic NM, that is neuromuscular junction, and NN, which is at the autonomic ganglias. The drugs which stimulates cholinergic receptors are called as cholinergic agonist. Now the examples of cholinergic agonists are pilocarpin, carbocol, Bethanecol, sevimelin, and here the receptors which they act on is mainly muscarinic receptors. 
Hence, the effects of cholinergic agonist is same as parasympathetic system. On the other side, cholinergic antagonists are the drugs which inhibits cholinergic receptors, that is mainly muscarinic receptors. Cholinergic antagonists are also called as anticholinergic drugs. All of the anticholinergic drugs are competitive blockers. The examples of cholinergic antagonists or anticholinergics are atropine, scopolamine and atropine substitutes. Now, atropine substitutes are basically synthetic atropine like drugs and there's a long list of drugs in atropine substitutes. There are completely different class of drugs which inhibits the nicotinic receptors at neuromuscular junction and these drugs are called as neuromuscular blockers or skeletal muscle relaxants. The examples of skeletal muscle relaxants are tubocurin, atracurium, mivacurium and rocuronium. Now another neuromuscular blocker is succinylcholine. Now the succinylcholine is called as depolarizing blocker. The succinylcholine structure is similar to acetylcholine. The only difference in the action is succinylcholine causes excessive depolarization of the receptors and because of the excessive depolarization it leads to relaxation of the muscles. The group of drugs which inhibits nicotinic receptors in the autonomic ganglias are called as ganglionic blockers. The examples of ganglionic blockers include hexamethonium which is a non-competitive blocker whereas trimethophan which is a competitive blocker. Now let's see the fate of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine once it binds to the receptor it is rapidly hydrolyzed by a very important enzyme called as acetylcholinesterase. This acetylcholinesterase will metabolize acetylcholine into choline and acetic acid. The group of drugs which inhibits this enzyme is called as anticholinesterases. Now anticholinesterases inhibits, they bind to this enzyme and inhibit them. So inhibitory action can be of two types. One is non-competitive inhibition which is mainly caused by organophosphorus and carbamates. Organophosphorus and carbamates they are basically toxic compounds and they are used in as insecticides and that's why these drugs are usually of toxicological importance. Now another group of drug is competitive blockers which are mainly used in therapeutic practices. The examples of competitive blocker that is competitive blocker anticholinesterases are physostigmine, neostigmine, donepezil, rivastigmine and there are various other drugs which I'll be discussing in the next chapter. So this finishes cholinergic neurotransmissions and the drug.